Hey, what's up guys, John here. We hear about these Florida property insurance prices. Florida's property insurance crisis. Insurance companies going bankrupt, leaving the state and leaving millions of Floridians scrambling to find insurance. No one really gives exact examples. Well, I'm gonna share my own story. This happened to me, I had to write a big check yesterday because of what's happening with Florida property insurance. This is absolutely getting insane. I don't think anyone's gonna be able to afford this. When I say anyone, I mean the 99% because rates are gonna continue to soar. So what's happening right now, we had this Fort Myers disaster, you had you know Hurricane Lee, you had Fort Lauderdale floods, you had the Miami building collapse, you had all these situations that have happened over the last, call it 18 months, and now it's getting much harder to keep an insurance policy at a rate in which you could afford. Well, I'm gonna share my story. I'm gonna share what's actually happened here because what they've told me, if I didn't comply, what happened is unbelievable. Please hit the like button. When you hit the like button, you can share this content, educate more people about what's really happening. And if you'd like to fix your credit, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, any negative item on your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com by clicking the link in the description just below this video to schedule a free strategy session. We're gonna be walking into a massive wealth transfer Transfer. Those with great credit are going to have great opportunities. Those with bad and average credit scores are going to have a much harder time getting access to a loan or a line of credit for your business. So go to greatcreditfast.com, click the link in the description below. So take a look at this. So the average insurance right now for Florida, $6,000 a year, essentially 500 bucks a month. That, that is crazy. The annual in national in coverage is $1,700 a year. Anywhere else, $1,700. So you're, you're paying essentially three times more more just for uh, insurance in Florida. So when I came here in 2021, like a chain of events pushed me here, just like hundreds of thousands of other people. But look at what happened here. So 2021, just had a baby, and uh, you know we went to the playground to let them sw go in the swings. All the swings, everything was taken off, right? Because everything was closed down, things were crazy in California and LA. And so looking around, you know, the real estate market was absolutely through the roof. And I'm talking to my wife, I'm saying, you know what? We might as well cash out at the height I believe we're gonna start seeing prices start to come down. I don't think this is over by any stretch of the imagination. I think the eviction moratorium is gonna to continue to get extended. And uh, right now, a lot of people think that this is all over and we're going back to normal. I think it's better to sell. Uh, so we might as well sell, but where are we gonna go? And we're looking around and Florida was a great option. Florida's a great option, no income tax, favorable lifestyle, had a lot of the same perks and benefits that California, LA offered, close to the beach. And so we ended up just moving, right? So we ended up moving here to a really, really nice area, rented a nice house, and then high season came and the landlord doubled the rent because you know the market was supported, so good for her. I ended up moving because I didn't want to pay double, uh, but I didn't really know where I wanted to go. So we were, my wife is having the second child, and uh, we had a relative come into town and the relative stayed at a hotel nearby and relative has you know, the gift to gab, talking to the lady at the front desk. The lady at the front desk said, my friend's mom just passed away and they're really looking to sell the property. They don't wanna go through the whole process of you know, having it on the market and dealing with all that. They just want a fast sale. And so I ended up offering that quick closing. So because of that, we got a great price. So great situation, great situation on the purchase price. And uh, it was just a great scenario, but Here's where things get really interesting. Now with all of these disasters that just happened with that I just mentioned earlier, insurance is getting so hard to get. And so because of that, every insurance company would not work with us. Nobody would work with us, nobody. And so what ultimately happened is that the, the uh, HOA said, look, we, can, we have one company that will, but we have to undergo a multi-million dollar renovation to be able to meet the new standards to get this insurance. And so this multi-million dollar renovations, roofs, parking lots, all these different things, uh, it's like a two month job, right? And so uh, that's what's happening now. And so the HOA sent everyone a letter and the, in the letter it said, look, you have one of two options. The first is you pay almost $400 per month for the next five years, just under $400 per month. That is crazy expensive. How many people can actually afford to pay an extra 400 bucks a month? The other option is to basically strike a check for about $20,000. Right. So looking at these options, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to call the HOA. I'm going to talk to them about this because I have some really big questions. There's more, you know, units in here and of a lot of, you know, older people. That's what Florida, Florida attracts a lot of retirees. You have a lot of retirees on fixed income. And so how can they afford this? So I call and say, well, look, what happens if I pay up front and we have 10 or 20 units or 30 units that can't afford it? 
What happens then? They said, well, it's simple. We're just gonna foreclose on their unit. We're gonna put a lien on it and we're gonna begin the foreclosure process. And so we would then just sell the property and then we would find a new buyer that can afford to pay it. And so you start to see what's actually happened here. This wealth transfer, it's gonna be unbelievable. Florida, it's gonna be a very expensive place. And I think a lot of people are gonna get priced out. I think a lot of people are gonna lose their units. I think a lot of people are gonna be pushed in a really, really hard position. So I was ultimately forced to strike the check for almost 20 grand because I didn't want that being tacked on top of the HOA because if I were to sell the property in a year, two years, three years, the HOA increasing you know, that much, the, the next buyer is gonna say, you know what, that, that HOA is way too expensive, especially given the price that they want. It's, it doesn't make sense. So it actually cost me money to pay on a monthly versus paying you know, upfront you know, on the end of the sale. And so I ended up paying upfront, but looking around saying, you know what, thank God, I, I was very, very conservative when I purchased this property. I did not you know, buy anything anywhere near the top of my means. It was like a very, very entry level you know, place. So I'm like, okay, this is a perfect little spot because it gets me in the location I wanna be in and I'm able to save a lot of money and put myself in a good spot. When the market crashes, I'll be able to go out there and you know, seize opportunity. I don't have a lot of money tied up in one property. So then we look at what's going on with auto insurance. My wife, for example, um, she has a, a pretty you know, average car. It's not like if you, if you pulled up at the street light and I'm right next to you, my wife, you wouldn't even probably notice the car, right? Just everyday American car. And the cost to insure, and the reason we have two kids, we have scooters, skateboards, the, the car gets destroyed. If you have like two, three-year-old kids, you know what, what it's like. And so when we went to go insure it, we talked to the insurance company. They said that if you pay six months upfront, we will give you a discount. We still had to pay almost $3,000 for insurance for six months in Florida. No accidents, we have no tickets, we have clean driving history, $3,000. If you look at what's actually happened to this state, insurance is getting absolutely out of control and it's gonna get much, much, much worse. When you look at you know, what we're gonna see here unfold the next year or two, it's interesting. We have 1.7 million vacant homes in the state of Florida, right? So 17% of the entire housing market in Florida is vacant. So the big question is, when you have this big insurance rug pull that's basically happening in the state, you have record high insurance, uh, picking up at, at a period with record high inflation, and you have everything getting more expensive, gas prices, everything's going up. How can people afford to live here, right? How can most people afford to live here? You have mainly a lot of retirees, people that own second homes and vacation rentals, especially the last couple of years. How are they gonna be able to hold on to these properties when tourism begins to gradually slow down as the economy and the labor market continues to soften and deteriorate? I'm betting a lot of people are gonna be forced to sell due to the rising cost. And so if things are gonna get more and more and more expensive and interest rates are gonna remain elevated, the average you know, home price in a decent area in Florida is probably $550,000, $600,000. How many people are gonna be able to afford five grand a month plus increased premiums? Not many, right? Not many people are gonna be able to afford that. And so when you look at this, Florida residents flee state as insurance premiums skyrocket up to 900%. Florida's getting crazy. It's getting absolutely crushed, right? You start to look at this with this Ron DeSantis this, uh, situation. A lot of people love Ron DeSantis. Anyone that is, this is just my opinion, anyone that's at a very, very high level, I always question them. So I'm not saying I like them, I dislike them. I just, I always, I always have reservations, right? Um, so when you get a $3.9 million payout from an insurance industry, you always ask yourself, well, no one's getting something for nothing, right? Anyone comes and writes somebody a check for a million bucks, they're not just doing it out of the goodwill of their heart. There's, there's gonna be something on the back end, right? To where they can invest 3.9 million and maybe pull 100 million out, right? So they're making an investment. They're not just donating money. Um, so when you're looking at this and then they're like, well, now it's getting harder to, uh, to harder to sue insurance companies. Now, a lot of people say, John, that's actually a good thing because of all these roofing scams that are happening. Well, maybe, maybe. But it also incentivizes bad behavior from insurance companies if you're unable to pursue them when you actually get into a legitimate claim. And so now when you're looking at this, Ron DeSantis is delivering the biggest insurance company bailout, right? Then this bailout situation unfolds, you know, right after the fact. So you look at this, it's a $2 billion reinsurance fund. So, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's something very skeptical is happening in Florida. Something that I think a lot of people should realize is likely gonna get much, much, much worse. And you know, Glenn Kelman, he came out in 2021 and he issued this warning, and I've actually covered this on this channel. Uh, September 3rd, uh, 2021, he came out and said 
Increasingly, it's going to get harder to get insurance. It's going to get harder to get a loan for these properties because the lenders are going to see the writing on the wall. That is collateral risk. I think that this idea of climate is going to be factored into how people think about housing. That hasn't happened yet. The only people that have figured it out are the actuaries, the people that have to calculate the cost of rising of insuring these properties. Right, says Glenn Kelman, the, uh, basically the CEO of the last 15 years at Redfin. Now, what I think is going to happen is I believe in 2024, 2025, people aren't going to be able to hold on. That's what I believe. We have a $2 trillion corporate debt wall that has to get refinanced next year. $2 trillion. Like, that is pretty crazy. And what's ultimately going to, what that means is these companies are going to have to restructure their debt from a 2% or 3% debt interest rate to today's rates, right? A lot of people are going to be forced to issue layoffs, right? We're going to start to see a lot of these high, high wages begin to soften. People are working remote. Remember the last couple of years, people would say, you know, I'm going to relocate from Silicon Valley, my $200,000 tech job. I'll go to Florida. I'll go buy a $600,000 house or $700,000 house at a 3% mortgage rate, and I'll pay no income tax, and I'll become a homeowner. I'll have the tax deductions, and, uh, and I'll be able to grow my wealth, and I'll be able to live a favorable lifestyle. Well, all that is coming to an end. In fact, a lot of what uh, Florida has benefited from the last couple of years is coming to an end. And instead, now we're walking into this new Florida, this new expensive, expensive Florida that I think is going to completely change Florida's real estate market. I believe we're going to see some really, really big opportunities. And then following that, uh, you know, huge opportunities behind this uh, crisis. But following that, you're going to want to be positioned for this. What do you think of this entire situation? Do you think we're walking into a very, very big problem in the Florida housing market? I certainly do. Drop below, uh, hit the like button. If you'd like to fix your credit, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, any negative item on your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com and I'll catch you in the next video.